All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the 25th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It's hard to believe that these Global Weather and Climate Reports actually began back in June, the uh, first month of summer 2022. And, um, yeah, there's been a lot of weather. There's been a lot of extremes um, around the planet since the very first edition. And um, I always enjoy taking a look at these um, at these kind of more global perspectives to see the big picture, to see what's going on, not just um, in our shores or around our shores, but indeed away from Europe um, and looking at almost, not necessarily the health of the climate, but just to see how it's how it's behaving and the different drivers that are in play at the moment and how it's distributing the heat and the cool, the wet and the dry. It's always a fascinating um, thing to look at, you know, just the atmosphere, the, the, the beauty of it, the, the distribution of extremes, um, it's just, it's never, it never ceases to, ma- uh, to amaze me, actually, just how amazing um, our, our planet really is and our atmosphere and, and weather and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate the interest that I do have in both weather and climate. I don't profess to know a huge amount about it, but certainly over the last 20 years or so, I've been glued to it and I continue to have this appetite for the weather as well as even climate as well. So let's have a look at the latest um, two-meter temperature anomalies for the globe overall. Now, this is looking back to December, and I want to step-by-step look back at what we've seen so far versus what we've got at the moment, versus what I believe that we're going to as we progress through the second half of the month. We are almost approaching the middle portion of winter 2022-23. Many people now have almost forgotten about what happened back in December. That first running two weeks of December was actually impressively cold, by the way. Let's not you know, allow our minds to become foggy in terms of what took place before. Highs of minus 6, you know, minus 17 in Bray Mar. We've seen uh, daytime temperatures minus 5 in Glasgow. We've seen overnight temperatures in England into the, uh, almost into the teens below freezing. And we had, of course, the significant snow event in the greater London area and the southeast. So we have seen winter so far. It, of course, has turned on its head the week running up to Christmas. But Scotland held on to the, the, the cold and even snowy conditions right up until the early portion of the month. And now even us have warmed up. But where do we stand in terms of what 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 is coming up in the next day, several weeks? That is something that I'm going to look at here. But notice here the amount of warmth across the top of uh, Asia northeastern portions of North America, Greenland, during the month of December, the cold was then focused over the mid, even potentially the low latitudes here of Asia. Notice here that the cold dropped all the way into Cambodia, Vietnam, even parts of Thailand as well. But very, very cold. And this was a huge turnaround versus what we've seen during the summertime of last year and indeed the autumn also. Very, very warm conditions dominate in China. Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, all seen a cold December overall, despite the fact, and of course, let's not forget, Central and Western North America, particularly Canada, uh, you know, a large way the United States was uh, cold than normal, uh, you know, compared to, you know, Texas, where it was above normal, even California was below normal, British Isles, Ireland, you know, northern portions of Europe as well, below normal. Look at the difference this month so far. We've got the cold where it was warm in December. We've got the warmth where it was cold in December. So it's interesting to see the turnaround in this pattern. Warmer across the UK and Ireland. Most of North America is warm. Look at that there. Apparently, according to Joe Bastardi, he made the statement that the first eight days, I believe, of the, uh, of January was one of the warmest on record for the United States. And that is indeed possible. I'm not 
question in that statement, but it's interesting nonetheless. But a big contrast compared to what we've seen during the month of December. By the way, temperatures in Siberia reached minus 62 Celsius. And that was indeed the coldest in Siberia in 20, 22 years. Yeah, we got that right. Yeah, it's 2023. Couldn't remember what year we're in. So in, in well, sorry, 21 years. I beg your pardon. I can't count. Um, so 21 years is the coldest. I'm guessing out with Greenland in 21 years overall. So that's quite interesting to see. So why have we seen this big flip around taking place between warmer versus colder? I believe a big a con contributor to the this turnaround is the Mount Julian oscillation and we've seen it happen during September, we've seen it happen during November, we've seen the pullback we've seen the Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation going positive, then as it rotated through certain phases i.e. 8 and into 1 we've seen the, the Arctic oscillation North Atlantic oscillation going negative very deeply negative during the month of December the question is what happens as this is rotating in through phases one, two, and three, do we start to see a change to colder again? Warmer across the top, colder in the mid to low latitudes. That is going to be the golden question. So let's have a look at the extremes around the planet at the moment here because there's a lot of things to look at. There's a lot of things to talk about. South Korea, Japan, very, very warm compared to normal. Big turnaround from last month, of course. So we're seeing temperatures record breaking levels here. This is, uh, a th this is basically Thierry Goose, and extreme temperatures around the world. Maximiliano Herrera does a, a terrific job at, you know, basically sharing on on the the Twitter world what's going on around the world in in great detail as well. By the way, I just think the the stuff that they produce, both Thierry Goose and Maximiliano is second and none actually here's a tweet by jim yang in china talking about over 200 weather stations breaking records among the big cities harbin 3.9 celsius and changchung 4.5 celsius um i'm assuming that's above normal uh, or above previous records i could be wrong um the highest temperature in the country 30.8 celsius in yang yang don't know exactly if that's the right pronunciation probably not um big extreme big contrast uh, occurring across central portions of asia while we're seeing extreme warmth across parts of china the like korea's japan we're seeing extreme cold over central portions of asia uh, which is quite interesting some of the mountains in iran for example minus 29 celsius yeah even though it can get to 50 52 celsius in the summer iran can get pretty darn cold in the winter time of course Here's uh, some impressive stuff. Bear in mind the amount of snow that we've seen in the alpine regions of uh, Japan, the temperatures into the minus 30s, uh, you know, just a week or two ago. Now we're talking about temperatures record breaking 18, 19 Celsius in the heart of the winter in parts of Japan. Record breaking levels, of course. And of course, let's not forget the atmospheric river that has been ongoing for the best part of 10 days now across California. Remember what I showed you, the big strong jet coming off Asia, across the Pacific, hose piping California with record-breaking rainfall and a massive dent in the drought that has been ongoing here. But as well as the rain, as well as the wind, we've also been seeing incredible amounts of snowfall. Mammoth Mountain, one of the snowiest places on the planet, 328 inches of snow so far this season. Bear in mind, a lot of this has fallen in the last 10 days. 190 inches of snow, that's 15.8 feet of snow, has been recorded here since the atmospheric river began, according to our good friend Jesse Farrell at AccuWeather.com. So impressive stuff, as you can see here uh, in this tweet. And totals for the last seven days, Mammoth Mountain, 92 inches, Kirkwood, Another very, very snowy place, um, 80 inches. Um, so remarkable snow totals indeed. And we are going to just shut this pattern down over the next couple of weeks as the pattern starts to shift. And a lot of it 
is down to this, our good friend, the man Julian Oscillation. Um, I do, like I said before, I do think we're going to have a step down process as we go through the next couple of weeks here. What follows that is going to be the big question, of course, for the British Isles and indeed uh, the rest of Europe here. So, of course, plenty of wet weather across um, western portions of Canada as well as the, the United States here. Record warmth across South Africa, temperatures as high as 46.3 Celsius. And um, yeah, here's the temperatures that we've been seeing across parts of Siberia, minus 61.9, which is um, 0 0.1 Celsius off the record for this site. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce these because I'll just embarrass myself. But yeah, um, minus 62.1 Celsius at uh, one station in Siberia, a new monthly record. And it is indeed the first temperature to hit minus 62 in Russia since 2002. Looking back at last year, Cherapunji, 13, 000, over 13,000 millimetres of rain has fallen. The wettest place, of course, on the planet. And it was the sixth wettest year in 30 years for this station here. It, parts of Taiwan, over 12,000 millimetres of rain. Um, and this is a new East Asia rainfall record, which is very interesting to see. Is that about it for now? Let's have a quick look, by the way. This is uh, off the Canadian model. I'm going to try and mix it up a wee bit, show you a couple of different things that I've not, I don't normally typically show you. I want to draw your attention here, by the way, to... I don't know if you're going to able, be able to see it. No. It's cut off because of my ugly mug, I'm afraid, but... This is this is the the two meter temperatures here predicted by the Canadian model over the next wee while. And one thing I want to note is the build up of cold across the top here. So Greenland is bitterly cold because the North Atlantic Oscillation is positive. That means we've got a trough over Greenland. We've got a ridge over the Azores here, and hence why the UK is seeing west to southwestly uh, storm track here a very active pattern that continues. We've seen a lot of rain England, Wales in particular drier than normal actually across Scotland. As you see here, we'll play through this loop. Temperatures actually, according to the model, is indicated to go down to minus 63 Celsius. The chances are that's probably over the Greenland uh, the Greenland ice cap, but I can't rule out northern Siberia even seeing colder than that minus 62, the coldest in some 21 years. Um, so interesting to see here. But what I want to say to you, is the cold is stacked up to the north. The polar vortex is very strong at the moment. We're seeing a lot of warmth in the middle latitudes. But notice here as we play through this loop, it may be hard to see, and I do apologise for that, but notice here how we start to see the cold becoming displaced southwards over Asia, over North America, and indeed over Europe as well, as we go through in the particularly next week. So draw your attention here to this section right in the middle, the middle latitudes. And as we play through the loop, even look at the UK and Ireland here in the top right hand corner, we're seeing plenty of cold air coming down from the northwest as we progress through next week and even beyond that here. The reason why is we're seeing a build up of pressure up towards the Arctic region here. I've got one minute left here, so I'm going to try and scoot on through. So that's quite interesting to see anyway, uh, the discharge of cold back. So I think we're going to get a huge turnaround, by the way. Where it's very warm, record warm across parts of Asia, across parts of North America, across Europe. I think we're going to start to see the cold coming south once again. And we're going to see a very different second half to January to what the first half has delivered so far. Of course, we've got an area of low pressure dominating the British Isles at the moment. Strongest winds, uh, low level winds, Aberdaran on the clean peninsula of Wales. 80 mile per hour winds, as you can see here. Mumbles Head, 69 up over the top of the mountains of Scotland, 84 miles per hour, as you can see here. And of course, this is the pattern that we've got. Firmly Atlantic driven, an area of low pressure close by at the moment. More wind, more rain is uh, spreading across the country here. So we do have the continuation of wet conditions, saturated ground, flooding is going to continue to be an issue, I think, over the next several days here. This is the latest radar, and you can see here the rain uh, coming down very heavy across some parts of the country here. Real quick, let's have a quick look at the latest GFS. You can see here one system exits, another moves in 
and we'll